This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. Christ didn't live in them in the Old Testament, but he lives in us today. And the church began, and all these teachings that we have today, uh, not only the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the personal, individual priesthood of every believer is something that was unknown in the Old Testament, but totally given to us today. We don't have to go to a tribe such as Levi to get hold of God. We can get hold of God ourselves because the Holy Spirit lives in us and we're children of God, something that didn't exist in the Old Testament. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. I usually greet you with good morning, then a thought kind of struck me one day. Well, some of you watch during the daytime, so if you watch it in the afternoon, you go, why did he say good morning? Because that's when I film these, and that's when they show uh, the main ones come out in the morning. So again, thank you for watching, but in the meantime, whatever time of day, it's morning somewhere, I know that. But again, welcome back to the Word of God today. We are in the series called Time Periods or with the coming of the Lord, this is the understanding in times. That's what we're teaching on. So this is an end times teaching. And again, what I started yesterday, I want to reemphasize. We are talking about dispensations. We covered dispensations yesterday. I will mention them again today. God thinks in time periods. God's progressive. Here's a block, there's a block, there's a block. And so God is progressive in his thinking. He's also logical. And so, you know, when people learn and go to, uh, to school somewhere, they take a philosophy class, what they do is they learn to think in blocks. Here's a block, you move here, you move here. And that's the way you get somewhere. Uh, it's like when you go on a trip, you might say, well, we're going to take three or four days to get there. We're going to stop here, stop there. You break it down into things. And once you pass that, you go to the next one, the next one, until you end up where you want to go. The Proverbs tells us and Psalms tells us that every day is a brighter day with God. And so like every dispensation, each one is another step toward the brightest day of all. And that will be the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Every dispensation outside of the first one, which was innocence, everyone then progressively heads. After the fall, everyone progressively heads toward that finer time period that we're all looking for. And where we talk, went yesterday was in Hebrews chapter one and spoke about God at different time periods, verses one and two. God spoke in different time periods in time past. Periods is plural for the Old Testament because five dispensations occurred in the Old Testament. Then it goes on to say he spoke in time past unto the fathers, that's the Jewish fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes after that. He spoke in time past unto the fathers, the Jewish leaders, through their prophets. Then verse 2, has in these last days spoken unto us Gentiles through his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom, that's through Jesus Christ, he also made the time periods. The time periods are dispensations. And what we pointed out was this, God at different time periods spoke in different ways. In every dispensation, how that God has approached man has been different. But how man approaches God has always been the same in each dispensation. Whether man had Jesus Christ walk with him in the garden, that was in the first dispensation, or later through types and shadows, later through burning bushes, later with a voice from heaven, later through the angel of the Lord, all the different ways, even a donkey at one time, all these things did one thing, it produced faith in the individual. When God spoke to man, it produced faith, and the way that man approaches God has always been the same in every dispensation by faith, by faith, by faith. In two ways that we approach him by faith. Number one, salvation has always been by faith in every dispensation. Abraham had faith in the Lord. It was accounted to him for righteousness. And David also said, happy is the man whom the Lord imputes not his trespasses against him. That's in Romans chapter four. The two major heroes of chapter four is Abraham and David showing something. Abraham before the law, saved by faith. David during the law, saved by faith. It's always been the same. How man approaches God has always, always been the same. How God approaches man has always been different. But then in the New Testament, we come along and today he's speaking unto us Gentiles through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But again, it's always been by faith. The two things that God has always done by faith in mankind is number one, we're saved by faith. And number two, we become righteous in our living by faith. Our works that we produce are even by faith. And so Faith is what uh, gets us into the kingdom of God and faith is what matures us. And so that's brought out in, in Hebrews chapter 11, spanning all the different dispensations. These were believers, but they grew in the Lord 
and they became spiritual in their walk by faith. By faith Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith uh, Sarah. We go down the list all the way through the time periods of Moses and Joshua, Rahab, uh, then down to the times of David and the kings, to the prophets after that. All those differences by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. And then it comes to chapter 12, wherefore see we also compassed about by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weights and let us run with patience the race set before us. We also become spiritual in our Christian life by faith. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 because we're going to further discuss the different dispensations and here, and then we'll cover what the dispensations are again. Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through three. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things we have not seen. In essence, what we hope for and what we uh, walk in faith for comes from the Word of God. The Word of God paints our hope for us and then paints a picture so we have faith to attain what we have hoped for. Verse 2, for by it, that is by faith, the elders obtained a good report. That means that they left a good testimony behind. Through faith, we understand that the world's. Here we have that same word again we found back in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, that Jesus Christ created the ages for it goes on to say, through faith, we understand that the ages, I own is the Greek word for that, and were framed or literally fit together by the spoken word of God. The Greek word is rhema, so that the things which are seen were not made out of things which do appear. This is not referring to this Bible or to this cup here on the table or this desk, that the things which are seen. No, no, it's referring to the things we see in life. The situations we receive in life were not made out of things that we appear. In other words, the news looks at all this and puts the evidence together, but God literally works behind the scenes and out of things we don't see, he starts creating things around us and literally even the time periods are in the hand of God, not in the hands of CNN, not in the hands of NBC, not in the hands of Fox News, not in the hands of anybody we see like that. We report what we see going on and we put things together and many have great perceptions to see what's going on, but the one behind the scenes that's working back there in the places where we can't see, he doesn't take things that appear and put them together. No, he makes things appear and it says, um, so the things which are seen, that's the things we're seeing ongoing right now, we're not made out of things which do appear. God doesn't take things that appear necessarily and manipulate those and use them. He literally works behind the scenes. This is how God does it. And we understand that this world we see out here, that's not the real world. The real world is God's world back behind it, not in Satan's world. Satan's world is temporary. The physical world around us is temporary, but God's world is eternal. And that's what we live by. So we live every day by faith, understanding God is behind the scenes, working all this for his own good and headed toward a great time period called the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. That's what's laying out ahead for us. Let me again mention the seven dispensations. Five are over. They were all Old Testament, one New Testament, dispensation. Then after that, we'll have one more time period to go. The five that were in the Old Testament, innocence. God started this world in innocence. The creation we see around us, the recreation we see around us, putting Adam and Eve in the garden, all that was God starting out and then man messed it up. In every dispensation, God kind of washes everything clean and then starts over again with a new dispensation, but man messes it up. The dispensation of innocence, God put man, Adam and Eve on this earth, then came the fall. They messed up. Then God made the dispensation of conscience where man did everything that seemed right in his own eyes. That one ended with the flood when mankind as a whole turned against God and God took eight people, Noah and his family, brought them out, put them in an ark, two of every kind of creature, put them in the ark, and then after the flood, they started the world all over again. Next of all came human government, where government started rising up. This ended when all governments came together and decided they were gonna build a tower, the Tower of Babel, and so God came and messed it all up and messed their languages up and separated them by languages. And then came the next dispensation, the dispensation of promise. And out of all that messed up world, he found a man named Abraham and started a physical race from him and a spiritual race from him. One was called the sands of the sea. That's the natural race, the sands on the earth. The other was the stars of heaven. That's a spiritual race. And in this one, it's one human race, the one on the earth, the sands of the sea. That's the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. But the stars of heaven, he said, through you I'll bless all nations, including Israel. But those are th the people out of all different nationalities that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior from the Old Testament into the New. Then came the dispensation of 
promise after that. That was, that was again, Abraham. After Abraham, that ended until, that went till the Egyptian captivity. And through him, this nation started and ended up in captivity in Egypt. And then of course, the Lord delivered them out of that. And after that came the next dispensation, which was the dispensation of law. This was given in the wilderness and lasted until the Lord Jesus Christ. From Moses until Jesus Christ, this is the essence of Galatians chapter 3, came the dispensation of the law. And this one ended, the law ended at the cross. When Jesus died, he said, it is finished. He was not referring to the plan of salvation. It was not finished till Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father. But on the cross, he said, it is finished. In other words, he fulfilled every type, every shadow, every jot, every tittle of the law. I have come to do your will, O Lord, he said, in chapter 10 of the book of Hebrews, verse 5. And that's where, again, uh, he came to, to keep, and again, every part of the law. He said, I've come in the fullness of the law. It is written of me. And so that was on the cross. He did that. Then 50 days later on the day of Pentecost, the church began, the church age. And that's last. It's the longest dispensation out of all seven dispensations. The church, which is the sixth dispensation, is the longest of all of them. And so it's been 2,000 years that this age of the church has been here, but another name for it is the dispensation of grace. That's how it's titled in Colossians and also the book of Ephesians, the dispensation of grace. And that will last until the rapture of the church. Once the church is gone, the earth will enter into seven years of tribulation, but after the tribulation comes the last dispensation, which will last 1,000 years, and that will be the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it will end at the great white throne judgment. After that, after all dispensations are gone, God's going to destroy the earth that we live on right now, the surface of the earth and the atmosphere around it, and he's going to create a new earth and create new heavens around it. And it'll be a different type of earth that's found at the end of the book of Revelation. No more oceans. And we'll have all people that live on the earth and uh, will be in resurrection bodies. There'll be no natural bodies, such as there was during the thousand years of millennium. There will be people who will have physical natural bodies as well as people in resurrection bodies. But in the time period called the uh, millennial reign of Jesus Christ, after that comes the eternity of eternities of which we will no longer have natural bodies. Anybody will all have resurrection bodies and we will be with the Lord forever and forever and forever. So that was in, again, the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through three, and we talked about that. When we come back after the break, we're gonna talk about the mystery, the uniqueness of the church age. And there were things that were kept secret throughout the Old Testament revealed in the New Testament today. That's called the mystery. These things are available and the understanding of them in my book called Understanding the End Times. In this book, I simply take again what is seemingly complicated things and I make them simple. Again, like dispensations. I've said it before. You can't understand algebra, trigonometry, geometry, all these other ones until you understand simple addition. Everything builds. You start with something simple. You keep building on that. And that's how the Lord does it. God starts out in time periods headed toward the last time period. And once you understand dispensations, you can understand the truth of pre-tribulational rapture. The Lord's going to take us out of here before the time of the tribulation. So you can have this. The announcer's going to tell you how you can have it. And I will see you right after the break. Understanding the end times, one of the most incredible and fascinating doctrines in the Word of God, will bring us comfort for the days in which we live. The Bible says we are to encourage and exhort one another with the knowledge of Jesus returning for his saints. In Understanding the End Times, Pastor Bob Yandian provides a thorough and exciting study to give you more revelation of these times in which we live. Topics include the seven dispensations, the dispensation of the mystery, the rapture of the church, the judgment seat of Christ, Daniel's 70 weeks, the temple discourse, the Tribulation, the Second Coming, the Millennial Reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. To order Understanding the End Times, visit bobyandian.com or call 918-250-2207. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 
250-2207. If you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite or call 918-250-2207. Welcome back. We're going to be discussing the church here for a little bit, talking about the church age we live in. In the meantime, you can go ahead and find a scripture, turn to Ephesians chapter 3. We'll be looking at that. But in the meantime, again, let me address my partners. I didn't address you in the first half of this broadcast. I just got so taken in by the word of God. But man, I rejoice for you. Listen, I rejoice for my salvation. I rejoice for my relationship with Jesus Christ. I rejoice for my relationship with my wife and my kids and the ministry I have. But I'll tell you, after that, I rejoice the fact that there are people out there who love and appreciate me and the word that I teach and preach. And so, I mean, I'm full of flaws and stuff like that, but this is one area where I'll tell you what, I just love to teach the word of God. And God has anointed me and God has gifted me to do it. The glory goes to him. But accomplishing this ministry, the glory not only goes to God, it also goes to you. You who stand beside me, you who hold up my hands, you who just are there faithfully every day, every week, every month, and you just continually send in support money as well as pray for me. And you see, my rejoicing is your rejoicing. When you become a partner, what, if, what happens in one affects the other. I pray for your needs. You send in prayer requests, but also you rejoice the fact that this broadcast is expanding. We're hitting more areas. We're affecting more people. And the thing just keeps on spreading. Book sales and all these other things just keep on increasing. And that's because of you. And I want to thank you for being there for me. If you'd like to become a partner with me, you say, well, what's a partner? A partner is somebody who's simply like Aaron and her, help me lift up my hands so we can accomplish the things and win the battles. And because even, even Moses couldn't do it by himself, he lifted up his hands, but they came because the hands can get tired. In the ministry, if you do it all by yourself, you can become tired. But when you have those who stand on each side of you and help you, then together we win the battle. So Moses couldn't say he won the battle. It took the group effort around him. And I can tell this, if you'd like to become a partner with me, go to my website, bobyandian.com. You'll find on there how to become a partner. And listen, for those of you about to do it, thank you ahead of time. You can, are, listen, you're a blessing now, but you're about to become a greater blessing in the days to come. Uh, in the New Testament, we run across the word, and that is the word mystery. And people often see the word mystery. It's found in Jesus mentioned a couple of times in the four gospels. It's mentioned quite often in the book of Ephesians and, and, and uh, also the book of Galatians. The word mystery is used there. And uh, Philippians, it uses it there. These are, these are books, again, where it's mentioned. And Colossians uses the word mystery. Uh, the word mystery, people look at and they say, well, I guess there's just things we're not supposed to understand. Mystery does not mean something which we don't understand. Mystery is something we understand that they didn't understand before, that has been kept a mystery up until the time the church age came along. And there's many things that God made reference to, but fully exposed in the New Testament. Jesus made reference to this word mystery a couple of times in the four gospels, Matthew, Matthew 13, 11, and Mark chapter four, verses 10 and 11. He started introducing the word mystery because he started introducing the church. The church is the mystery. The disciples didn't know it was coming. In fact, they thought the next step in what Jesus was doing was going to usher in the kingdom. And they stood with him on the Mount of Olives and said, when are you going to usher in the kingdom? He said, it's not for you to know the times of the seasons which are in my Father's hands, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you to be my witnesses. They didn't understand that too, because in the Old Testament, Israel was the custodian of the gospel and the custodian of the word of God for discipleship. In other words, they were the custodians of the Great Commission. The Great Commission didn't start with the church. It was transferred from Israel to the church on the day of Pentecost and will be given back to Israel when the church is gone. This is found in Romans chapter 11 and verse 25. And so one day God's going to refer back and give that back to Israel. But what happened was he now says it's going to be given to you. They didn't understand that totally about it's going to be given to the church. They talked about the church. I'll build the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm sure they looked at each other and said, what is the church? It was a mystery. But once the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, the revelation of the mystery was given to us, which is the church. So the word, the Greek word is musterion. It's actually a translation alliteration into the word mystery, which we have 
in the New Testament. The word mystery is a Greek word, meaning the philosophies and teachings of ancient fraternities, but known only to the members of that fraternity. We have the same thing today, and that is we have the Masons today, and we have uh, the Magi of chapter two of the book of Matthew. Although they came to see Jesus, we don't know much about the Magi. We can study them. We might see where they live. You might understand some things they did, but we don't understand their teachings because why? You had to be a member. I don't know if many of you had uh, tree houses when you were growing up, but I remember a guy down the street had a tree house and you could get inside of it and close the little door on the outside of it, but there was a secret knock. You know, you said the secret knock and that means you could come in. Well, basically that's the same thing we have today. We have all these fraternities and sororities and things like that, and they have their secrecy things that go on on the inside. And although it's somewhat childish today, I mean, you know, somehow it makes them feel special, but with these fraternities and, and that we have today, such as, you know, people belonging to the, the Masons, all that kind of stuff, you don't know what they teach exactly until you become a member on the inside. Now, many members have come out and told what went on, even forfeiting their own life, because many of them tell you that your life is forfeited if you tell what goes on behind closed doors. But that's a great example of what mystery is. In other words, you have to be a member to understand what the teachings are. Our Bible tells us that to the world, what we preach is foolishness. They do not understand. They might hear what we're saying, but it just sounds like, you know, peanuts, wah, 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 wah. They don't understand what we're talking about. And we use words, you know, and all that. And that's why, again, when a person gets born again, they now are able to understand what we're talking about. They've now become a member. They did the secret knock on the door. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I accept him as my Lord. And bam, they're a member of the church. They come through the door. They're now a member on the inside. And what used to be foolishness to them now becomes the words of eternal life. The difference is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus simply said that. The whole ministry of the Holy Spirit drastically changed on the day of Pentecost and has been poured out in his fullness on the church today. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, something un un unknown in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit didn't live inside of them, but he lives inside of us. We can be filled with the Spirit, speak with tongues. They could be filled in the Old Testament if they didn't speak with tongues, but only at certain ones could be filled. The Holy Spirit come upon them as he did in the day of Pentecost, and he came upon them at certain times, but he could be taken away. Once we have the Holy Spirit given to us at the new birth, and then we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we have it all the time. Even in carnality, you can speak with tongues. So the point of it is, we have a whole church of that. That was the church at Corinth. But understand this, that as we walk with the Lord, we begin to understand things that were unknown in the Old Testament. Again, we're part of the body of Christ, didn't exist in the Old Testament. Part of the church did not exist in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit given to everybody, and, and we become the temple of the Holy Spirit, totally unknown in the Old Testament. All these things are part of the mystery. The mystery itself started on the day of Pentecost and will end at the rapture of the church. Why? Because it is the church, and it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the mystery. Christ didn't live in them in the Old Testament but he lives in us today. And the church began and all these teachings that we have today, uh, not only the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the personal individual priesthood of every believer is something that was unknown in the Old Testament, but totally given to us today. We don't have to go to a tribe such as Levi to get hold of God. We can get hold of God ourselves because the Holy Spirit lives in us and we're children of God, something that didn't exist in the Old Testament. They were servants of God. This is Hebrews chapter three, but we are children of God. They, I mean, listen, they lived in the servants' quarters, but don't you know God's servants' quarters are top notch, but we live in the house. We have special privileges because we're children of God. Again, all these things that were given to us that are blessings to us. So again, in the New Testament, it's the word referring to the church age teachings and doctrines. The word refers to teachings hidden in the past, but revealed unto us today. Like mysteries today, clues have been dropped before the understanding came, but the clues were dropped throughout the Old Testament and the four gospels. Jesus started mentioning this word mystery as he got into his teachings. And again, it's about the church and the New Testament teachings for today. Again, the church age began on the day of Pentecost and will end at the rapture. And the mystery teaches a Jewish and Gentile church today of every kindred, tribe, tongue, and nation, and that Jews can become, in fact, the first ones that the gospel was preached to on the day of Pentecost was thousands of religious Jews out of every nation under heaven that came for the Feast of Pentecost. And Peter preached to them. And what did he preach to them? This same Jesus that you have crucified has been risen from the dead 
and preach to them that the, the one they even killed on the cross, and it wasn't the Jews that just killed him, it was their Jewish leaders that were responsible for it. I know the, gen, the, the uh, Romans put him on the cross, but the Jewish leadership are the ones who, not the Jews on the street, the common Jews, but he blamed the religion for doing that. And so by doing that, what happened was he simply said, but this same one that you've crucified is now become Lord of all and King. And by accepting him and 3,000 Jews, devout Jews out of every nation under heaven, accepted Jesus Christ on that day and became the foundation for the church in Jerusalem. After that, Jews and Gentiles were saved. Paul was called to the Gentiles. Peter was called to the Jews. And we see the great things happening in the book of Acts. Look at Ephesians chapter three. Here we have an introduction, a great introduction to what the mystery really is. Ephesians three, I'm gonna read verses one through six. For this cause, that's the cause of the church. That was at the end of chapter two. I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, that's the church age, which is given to me to give to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, again, dispensations, time periods, I own is the Greek word, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promises in Christ by the gospel. And so we find out here that the, the mystery includes being saved by faith in Jesus Christ and all the things that happen at salvation that did not happen in the Old Testament. He's not only with us, which was Old Testament, and still with us in the New Testament, but he also lives in us. And we become, a bo our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit, things that did not exist in the Old Testament. Look at Romans chapter 16, if you would, verse 25 and verse 26. Now to him that is a power to stabilize you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the ages began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. You know what this verse is saying? You can't try, truly live the Christian life as you're supposed to without understanding the teachings of the New Testament. And the teachings of the New Testament, the core of them were not even found in the Old Testament. Types and shadows of them were, but the full revelation has been poured out upon us today with the full revelation and the giving of the Holy Spirit. All this is found in my book on understanding the end times. I know you want a copy for yourself and listen, please get it, read it, get two or three copies and give them to other people because end times is not something that is difficult. I will see you tomorrow as we continue this series on in times. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on contact or call us at 918-250- 2207. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.